Okay, good evening. Hi, hello, Forge Alliance uh, mapping community. This is Morax. I'm going to give you guys a short lesson on how to use the uh, new FAF editor tool that Ozonex has kindly been developing us for several years. Uh, three, four, maybe? I don't know what the hell several actual instances. I think it's seven, but some people tell me it's three or four. Anyways, regardless, uh, kind of was thinking of how to start these out and decide instead of going through full-fledged map-making processes, I'm just going to show at first how to do little tidbits here that people may not be aware of and just kind of get familiar with the tool. So what I'm going to start out with here is uh, literally just making a new map from the start right there, go over what needs to be done, and you should hopefully at least be able to replicate what I do here by watching this video. Uh, so first and foremost, I'm going to make all of this content available at a uh, shared thing, maybe the uh, kind folks in the council will allow me to use some uh, space on the server so we can put these files on there. There shouldn't be too much, but I don't want to put them in the map vault because they're legit just going to be pieces of small information. So anyways, let's uh, go ahead here. Just going to give this one the title Mountain Tutorial. What's the date? Today is uh, 07-30-2018. I'm ready to get the American way. So, since most of our users are European, I guess I'll write it the European way. So let's give a little round of applause to that. Um, description, FAF map editor tutorial on how to create nice, good looking, eroded mountains with the Ozone X mapping tool. Very good. So here we go, create new map. A bunch of gobbledygook shows up, looks like we're okay. And Microsoft has failed and still hasn't activated my Windows copy since I put a new processor in, so apologies about that. That's gonna be kind of annoying to look at, but try and ignore it for now. So anyways, uh, first couple of things I'm gonna tell you about before we go over this is you're gonna wanna look at what your base height is and usually that's one of the most important things to go over in the beginning is setting those values. But since we're just gonna be working with something that's not gonna interact with the rest of how the map is built, we're just gonna go straight from the get-go. Um, but the best way to figure out what your height is is you can hold down the control button and left click. And I just did that and you see we're at a target height of 16 still. If it was something else like, uh, I'll just add a couple of uh, incremental values here and you'll see I click in the uh, open area here away from where this terrain was that was just raised and you get a value of 16. So that's going to be pretty helpful in understanding what height you're at and how you get some results going forward. So let's see here. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Anyways, let's see what's happening here. I'm going to do something interesting at the start here just to show like the before and after effect. So first of all, we got symmetry settings. Uh, this isn't really necessary for the lesson right now, but um, I'm going to keep it at center by angle 2 to 16. So I'm going to replicate the feature two times in the beginning just to show what's going to happen here. So you can look at one mountain will be left on the side just using some flat plateau types. And then the other one I'm going to show using features that I created eroded. Um, so let's just get going, make them some terrain where right? stock is 16. So uh, usually what I like to do is create kind of like a fake terrace effect, which is basically the geological term for how terrain looks once it's withered away and eroded right there, and you get kind of like steps in nature. It's uh, examples can include, like if you look at like pictures of like desert-like surroundings, you'll see that there happens to be like layers that come off with, with them, and I don't know the whole description to it, but that's kind of the effect you're looking at. So if I just go with 17 here, and then just set a hot unit one, just draw anything random, we're just gonna do whatever. It's really hard to decide how you want things to look at the beginning of a map. You kind of just need to iteratively just like go back and forth and see how it goes. Uh, so next thing I'm gonna do is create 17, create a little less inside this space here. So we get some, I think I'm gonna do, yeah, let's do two mountain peaks that are in here so we can get it kind of varied and nice right there. That'll give us a nice effect to kind of show how it blends all together. Uh, so just like I said, continually moving up in increments as we get build up the mountain here. I'm also going to decrease the size of this. Uh, one handy thing you're going to want to learn how to do is go to keyboard shortcuts and figure out what happens. I really 
like the new keyboard shortcuts that Ozone has done. If you hold down the W key and move uh, the mouse after you hold down the left mouse button, you'll see if you look at the uh, size here, you get an increase in size just by moving it like that. So it's nice and easy. And the other one here, strength, you hold that down and that's basically how quickly the terrain is going to be deformed or made. I'm going a little quick here right now with it just to get it done so we can get the base feature before we go into the specifics. But that's kind of what you do with these things. And I'm going to explain how these help you in creating the mountains pretty soon. Uh, the other thing down here is you have different types of shapes for your brushes. Uh, as you can see, someone's made some presets and mountains that have been added to it. I don't know if that was Ozone himself, but they seem okay. I think it's kind of nice little base right there if you want to do some quick and stuff. But this is like the real like nitty gritty, like get some like good results kind of going. So let's just continue building up here, see what happens. I'll do this really quickly now instead of being really careful just to keep the video time down kind of short. I was thinking about playing music with this while I did this, but it got kind of annoying trying to talk over some tunes because I got distracted and thought about concerts I've been to before. Anyways. layer here so there you go just already zoomed out right there you can kind of see it looks like a pretty decent geological feature right there it's not too complicated pretty easy but it gets the point done um, I really don't like having this Greenland texture right here so I'm gonna quickly change this not necessary you can do whatever you like with that but I'm gonna change it to something that makes me feel like I'm actually making mountains so let's just choose some rock texture real quick. I'll go with this guy. You win today. Not bad. So as you can see, like we don't really have too much of a height difference right here. Um, maybe a little deceptive as far as we go. If we turn this on right here, I am getting some of the dark red right here. Uh, from what I understand, it may not be perfect yet this is kind of a guideline here is if you look at green with the height map uh, that's basically you can build units on top of it structures and any unit can traverse over it when you get to the yellow and maybe this orange color I think that means units can walk over it but they can't have structures built on top of it uh, the dark red is supposed to indicate that nothing can happen there units can either walk over that or structures cannot be created. So you're going to want to use this pretty frequently. This is an, um, where we got edit, file, symmetry, help. Doesn't look like it's listed here anymore. It used to be, ah, there it is. You have G and control for slope right there, and that tells you things. Just turn that on. The hotkey is control plus G, though, or G plus control, whichever way you want to say it. So it's nice to take a look at that every once in a while and kind of get an idea of, uh, how your terrain's acting with the rest of the thing because you don't want to make a mountain like this and have the appearance that oh there's this thing in the way and then you click a unit move order from here to here and you see the thing just walk across the top of it there that's kind of silly mechanics if you're looking out zoom right there it's kind of hard to keep track of all that and sometimes people call that a pathfinding issue but really it's just probably bad map making so anyways, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to show you how you make the eroded effects so that you don't just have these like little plateau features right here. And you're going to create some more terrain under the heat map that shows you that units cannot traverse along this here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the brush size down pretty low. I'm going to change it to like 4 or 3. Anything below 3, it barely shows up. Even with that, it goes there. So actually on second thought, let's go for 4 and just see how it goes. Um, I'm going to turn off symmetry settings here now so only one of the mountains is affected. So just put that to none for that. And what I'm going to do here is this is really critical. The strength has a value of 0 to 100. And for the most part, I think in like 40 and above, it's ridiculously fast. There's like terrain made really quickly here. It's like you don't have like any time to react unless like you're like some nature beast or something like that that's like a jedi level crap uh so what's important is you're gonna have to play around with the settings a little bit and kind of get comfortable i set it pretty darn low to like anywhere between like five and ten and what happens here is you want to choose the max height of your mountain here so that you can achieve an effect that kind of like stretches it up this way 
So what you're going to do here is you're just going to slowly drag and you see we got nice deformation here happening and it's kind of controlled. So you get this like a little path that's on there. And already we've got something that looks a little bit better than what you had before. And just to remind you guys, because you need to do this, always be hitting this here and see what happens. And I know this looked like it wasn't much before, but now you got something that actually has created a little bit of terrain here so that this is a true mountain. Nothing can pass over it, which is pretty desirable. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go through each step here. Kind of go up. This is going to take a really good amount of like patience and time. So my suggestion to you is if you're going to use this process in your map making is to probably save it till the end and get the desired result that you want for the rest of your map. Because as soon as you start deep diving into really detailed features like this, it's going to get really painful if you find something that's just horribly broken wrong with your map and you can't fix it. Um, this happened to me when I made one of my maps Meridia and people pointed some things out to me and I'm like, well, crap, I got to like blow this whole mountain away and redo the whole thing. Really frustrating, really annoying. Um, don't want to do that. So let's see here. Let's just start this one over here and get kind of the same effect. And you don't have to go like from the top or bottom in any specific order. You can kind of just manipulate the terrain. And you can start like little zigzags here. Erosion's kind of random and crazy in nature, depending upon how things fall. So you're not going to want to just like drag one line here, here, evenly spaced or anything. I do some diagonals here and everything. And there's like little pockets along there that move about. It's also important to go down here and make sure you're not doing too much. You can fix this later, uh, but it's important to keep track. But you don't want to mess around with it too much. Otherwise, it gets exponentially more difficult to get the desired effect. So let's see what we got here. I would try and do this faster, but it's really not something you can just kind of hasten right there. It does take a little time. That's probably why most people don't bother with this in this one, or as I'll show in a later lesson, how you use World Machine to create these effects. And I don't think World Machine is the end-all be-all. There's pros and cons to both of these techniques, and I'll go over those as I get both lessons done when we go over like a whole map-making process. Uh, so already if you zoom out, you can see quite a difference here. This one looks just kind of like if you were looking at like a geographical like topography map for uh, expeditions, if you can like kind of plot your course and look at like major elevation changes, and this one's starting to look a, more, a little more natural. Um, this actually doesn't look too, too bad. I think if you look at most maps, you're going to see this kind of like jagged terrain when you use like the 3D view camera, but the game's meant to be played top down. You're not really supposed to be going around and like doing the 3D view the whole much that much time. Like maybe if you just get some like free time in between, but if you're playing the game like pretty intensely, it's pretty rare you do that. But if you're pedantic like me and you want to get everything nice and smooth and have it all detailed, you're going to want to spend some time on this kind of stuff. So in the essence of time, I'm going to, cut this here and just kind of leave this at this. We can kind of look at like one side here versus the other. And the next step of what we're going to do here is you're going to use not the standard flatten, sharpen, or anything, but you're going to use the blur tool. And you're going to want to keep the size of the brush maybe a smidge lower uh, than what you use. So if you were at four, three will be good. If you're using five or six, turn it down to like four not too much lower than what it was before there so you can kind of get it together um this is where strength c plays really critical you can turn this up a little bit here because it's going to take a while to do this now what we got here is some eroded features right here as you put it down but unless you're spending a lot of time and you find like a really good sweet spot for the strength you're gonna want to have to edit this up a little bit as you go down you can't just do smooth line transitions unless you go like this way through and it's going to suck. So thankfully we have the blur tool so we don't have to worry about that so much and as you press down here you'll get nice effect where the terrain smooths out a little bit and you don't get that really annoying defines line that's right there. You can make things merge together a little bit. Um, so just go ahead through here and work on it a little bit and keep getting your effect that you want here.
and already we're getting a lot better of a result there. And it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, it's a game. It's a game engine. It's all pixel driven and has things. So you're never going to get rid of like all the sharps and everything. So it's best not to mind about all of them right there. If you're going for like really highly competitive things, like maybe you're looking at like biases mapping tournament, uh, which may not be a good reference considering it may not be around forever or anything like that. But if you're going for something like that, yeah, maybe get rid of this right there. Hint, hint. Anyways, just going over this a little bit here. Rid of this guy here and right here maybe something here there not too bad I'm gonna leave it at this right here and I'm realizing the texture I picked is probably not the best to exemplify the effect I'm getting here because you can hardly see the transformations uh, taking place with it right there blends a little too much. So let's try changing the texture to something else and see how it goes. Let's go with something much easier to see. Something a little brighter. Let's go with the desert one because they tend to be pretty poppy. Yeah, there you go. So you can see that a lot better there. Now I can actually see where I would have want to focus my attention on like smoothing things out there. So kind of a pretty good example right there. You get a nice smooth terrain. Turn this on right here. Um, and get a little bit of a jagged effect with the where everything's not passable. So what I would recommend is probably going over this maybe a couple of times more. And I didn't do too much of an elevation change. As you can see, it's pretty low to the ground. So what you want to do is maybe add some more height than what I did there. Get it good. You want to, in theory, you want everything along this edge here where I'm dragging my mouse now to be dark red so that units can't move over it. Because if you leave it like this, units could technically, I like I get I said, I don't, I don't know what the orange one is exactly, but I'm assuming that means it's hard to traverse, but you'll get effects where everybody's seen Ilshiva and Mantis get stuck in mountains and they just sit there and wiggle around and it's really annoying because the game's uh, intelligence is not that great for its age in terms of these pathfinding issues. So go over this a couple of times and if you get good at it right there and get some good effects, you're going to see something around here and you have a nice looking mountain that's pretty much purely aesthetic. Says to the player, hey, we can't go around here. It has to get away. Hey, that looks like it's kind of nice. But you also don't want units to really kind of go in between here. And that gets hard to really perfect. You're going to have to play around with it a whole bunch of times and you're going to have to go over it. Like, I don't know how many times, but it shouldn't be too, too terrible. But just get good at it right there. And that's kind of how you do some mountains. Uh, Looking at this guy here, now that you're looking at just the uh, nice sand texture I chose, so you can see it there, it's kind of blah. I mean, it's yeah, it's technically a little terrain difference right there, but it's not really all that great. So if you want to make some better mountains here, kind of use this practice here, use those settings. If you've got any questions, uh, join the Forge Alliance Forever map uh, in Mods Counselor uh, area. There's a nice channel that Silent War is set up, and whoever is the counsel for him or going forward should be able to help you guys out and feel free to ask any questions.